All right, so this time I wanna show how to get navigation in. We're gonna be using Unity's basic navigation, but I'm using the experimental features on it. Uh, so it's not gonna be the standard navigation if you've used that before. It's very similar though. All right, so I've selected a couple of units down here and I'm gonna right click up here. And now the units are making their way over. They're finding these jump areas, these bridges, nav mesh links. Uh, in the past, you might be familiar with them as off mesh links, but in the newer system, they're called nav mesh links and they can pass through a wide area. And we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, now there is a bug that shows up, a couple bugs that show up in this system. Now, uh, this one is pre-existing. It was inside of the original Unity system, and I wouldn't exactly call it a bug. Each one of these units is trying to get to the exact location that I set and uh, make sure I get the bottom of it. Even if I move it out of the way, you can see the AI is still trying to get back to that spot. And then it, they push each other out of the way and they're now competing for that position. You get enough of them and you start getting a spiral effect. Anyway, we will be fixing that in a later video. That is not what I'm resolving this time around. Okay, um, but with that called out, uh, let's start talking about how to actually get nav mesh to work. Normally you would go into the navigation panel, which you can get to through window, AI navigation that brings up this panel and then you can bake the scene. All of the objects that are static, all of the objects that are marked static in the inspector, like this object is marked static, will be and has a collider, will become part of the navigation mesh. Now it's looking for flat areas that it can use and it's making sure that it has enough boundary around it. For instance, we have all this junk over here that sticks out at various points and it tries to do kind of a low poly cutout of it just to make sure that it wraps around it and that the units won't generally collide with it. Uh, it's not perfect. You can see some glitches here. It is low res. <clears throat> and that helps it operate a little faster. And here you can even see that it's climbing the junk. And if you're not careful, it could find pathways through the junk. But it didn't care. All right, so... Uh, we've got this nav mesh. Now, I'm not using this nav mesh up here. I'm actually using a different nav mesh. Oh, uh, before we get to that, though, I will show you how to actually uh, get a drone to move on it. So if I go into the inspector, I did add this script. Uh, each drone gets this nav mesh unit, or sorry, nav mesh agent. That's built into nav mesh. That's the default. It's there whether you add the experimental features or not. Uh, and it ju I just went with the defaults on it uh, to start out with it as a humanoid character. Uh, we will add more later, such as the tanks will be bigger. <clears throat> Next, uh, there is the unit motivator. The agent can move the unit around and it will travel from one point to another. We just need to give it a destination. And that's what this script does, unit motivator. So unit motivator takes the agent, which is this nav mesh agent, so it has a reference to it. It takes the info, this script up here, so it has a reference to selectable to find out whether or not it's selected or not. And it has the right-click target. In video five, I believe it was, I, at the last part of it, I had demonstrated that I had added the right-click destination. Uh, so when I right-clicked on an area, it would set a Vector3 observable. That Vector3 observable is also listened to here for when it changes. So when we right click, it will set that value and its change to a new position will trigger a method, any listener listening to it, which is what this unit motivator does. I'll jump into the code and this is really it. So there's the three fields we were talking about. In the awake function, I take the right click target and I add the listener on right click. So as soon as that ever changes, it will call this method with the new vector three of where it went. Next, if it is not selected, we exit out of here right away. So if this object wasn't selected, then we're not gonna do anything. We're not the object that needs to move. However, if we are, if we're still here, then we are selected. And so we're gonna say the agent destination goes to where, that's it. That's all, and now those units are trying to get there. That's all it takes. But now let's get into the experimental features and why I pulled that in and how we can use it. All right, uh, because it's not getting set up the normal way. 
I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to stop the code and I'm going to go over to here to, uh, you can see an environment. I added nav mesh, which is just an empty object. And then I added drone mesh, which is an empty object under that, that I added nav mesh surface to. Nav mesh surface is part of the experimental features. So this allows me, let me go into the scene view to if I, I can clear this and you can see that I have, there, there is no longer a nav mesh showing up and I can bake it. This is a component. This I can trigger at runtime. So I can do dynamic updates, which is perfect for the fact that I want to make this a dynamic RTS. All right, uh, especially if you want to put level editing or map editing in front of the users so that they can create their own maps, you're going to need some way to set that up for them. And this will allow it in Unity. All right using their default tools. I have no interest in recreating the Dijkstra's print, uh, AI pattern for generating all these principles in code. Um, not when Unity Nav Mesh already does it pretty well. All right, so over here, uh, let's see. Yeah, we've got this, we can just clear. We added the Nav Mesh surface and I can bake it. Now it does have a glitch. Using the default settings, even though these drones are not static, they are still blocking out some of the terrain with their colliders. Because you can see they have this collider. I'll go to Edit Collider. And it's effectively still blocking out the area. Oh, that collider is not shaped right. Whatever. Not important at this moment. All right. But effectively, it still blocks out this area. So when I'm looking at the nav mesh, you can see it got cut out. Now, if I were to disable this nav mesh or just clear it so there's no more nav mesh there and use the normal navigation and just bake it again with the same settings, bake, you can see these did not get cut out. In the original settings, let's clear this one. On, this is Unity's navigation built in. And then this is the experimental feature. Uh, over here, if I bake this, that gets put into there. Now, there is a way to get rid of that. Um, and basically, if I disable the drones, go into the drone mesh, clear it, and bake it again, puts it in there, then I can put the drones back in, enable them, and go back to the drone mesh, and it's as if it was all there. Now, this technically isn't too big of an issue because of the fact that when you're traditionally creating an RTS, you don't want to have the units placed with the map. Now, sometimes you do. Sometimes there is a very special case with a very special uh, scene that you want some units. Like if you have an NPC character that is pivotal to the storyline, a lot of times they're already placed in the scene. But usually you dynamically load them. All right, so in this case, uh, that is the hack to get rid of them. And for the most part, we shouldn't need to worry about that much anyway uh, for the future. Okay, but that's a call it to fix it. Now, in addition to that, there are these, these nav mesh bridges, or otherwise nav mesh links. Originally, we would create them as off mesh links, where you end up creating a point and then another point, and you can connect those two points, and you would repeat it repetitively all along a wall or a section where there is a different type of animation or a different uh, a w an area where you need to connect two different uh, nav meshes. All right, so I didn't want to do that in this one. That's kind of a pain to do. And usually people will often write their own scripts to just start expanding them out anyway. I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this one because we're not using it anyway. And instead, the experimental one, AI nav mesh, includes nav mesh link. I'll show you how to get the experimental features in a second. Okay, nav mesh link. I just tell it which type this is for. Uh, and then I can automatically set the positions. If I click this, this is one of the two positions for where it goes to. Just like the original one had two anchor points, this one does two, but it's visualized and has nice tooling. So I can drag this around and move it to other areas, but the line, the, it's shading one away. It used to be a solid rectangle. Um, if I go back over here, here's what's happening. When it goes to a solid color like this, or like this, um, that means that it's actually connected on the nav mesh. This section is actually touching right here. It's a little hard to see in this, but it's touching right there or it's close enough to be considered touching. 
But anyway, if it's not touching or not close enough, that connection isn't made. So it's showing you that the connection is actually there. All right. Now that gives us the initial one. There's also two little points on the side. If I change that, I can change the width. And now this automatically gathers how it's connected. You can also see the arrows that it's indicating which way. So I could say it's bi-directional and then it indicates, oh, well, you can only go this way if it's not bi-directional. So I can get rid of that, but I do want bi-directional here. All right, now they don't have to be touching completely. It can be off by just the tiniest amount and it'll still be fine, but you usually want it overlapping a little bit. All right, so that is there. I can see this nav mesh showing up. Yeah, you can see it's not even touching here and it still counts it as connected. Uh, whoops. That one. There, now it's crossing under. Okay, now that gives us the nav mesh or the nav mesh link. And over here was the nav mesh surface, which we're taking advantage of both right now. Additionally, if you wanna add these features, the other key thing is that um, this is an experimental package, so you won't see this by default in here. To get it, you do not need to go to the advanced settings and set the pre-release packages. I usually avoid that at almost all costs. It has to be something very worthwhile. In this case, the nav mesh surfaces, uh, dyna the dynamics for that, that's very important to me on this. And everything seems to be working in that system, so I'm planning on relying on it for now. Okay. Uh, if you want to get it, if someone ever shows you this screen, for instance, and you want to get the package, but it doesn't show up in your list, just under this description over here, uh, you can see its name, com.unity.ai.navigation. I can click over here to plus, add package by name, and then just type in com.unity.ai.navigation, and then click add or enter. And you can see it's refreshing to see if there's a new update. Um, which that's yeah, taking longer. Okay, there was no new update and it's there, it's connected. Now, and then of course it also includes the samples which I did not pull in for this. All right, I'm gonna close that or go back to game. I believe that that is all of the changes that I needed to show in this. I think, uh, let's see, yeah, we've got the nav mesh. Uh, the units can move around, they respond to the right click. So I can play, I can have different units go to different locations and they generally avoid all the areas. Uh, one of the things that I should call out uh, since we are using nav meshes now, um, oh, let me stop that. There. Okay, so when I am showing this nav mesh surface inside of scene, um, you can see it cuts out of all of these, all of this junk that's surrounding it. Now inside of this, I included this tool called Apply Rotations, which transforms the junk to another angle. Now that no longer lines up here. There's openings here, there's other areas where you're really colliding in with the junk, and so that's not going to work out very well. You have to remember that if you update the apply rotations, you also need to go into the nav mesh surfaces and tell them to bake again. So I'm going to bake that and it recut this out to make all of its connections, get everything in there, and there it is. All right, uh, that is it for this. Uh, I hope you ended up finding it useful. I'll talk to you later.